Hello everyone, my name is John Combs and today we're going to go over insulators, conductors, and how to put a charge on them and how we can see them used in our daily lives. Uh, to start off to best understand this concept, we need to understand what a charge is and what charges do. In electrostatics, meaning with electricity, we have determined there are two different types of charges. We have a positive and a negative charge. When they are opposites, they will attract, and when they are the same, they will repel. You may ask then, well, what determines if something has a positive or negative charge? It is when we compare the number of electrons to the number of protons in an atom. Here we can say we have four protons and four electrons, so it has a charge of zero. Over here, we still have four protons, but then we have five electrons, and we have a negative one charge for this atom. So from what you can tell from this picture, it, it is the electrons that, that will determine the charge. If we have more electrons than protons, you'll have a negative charge. If we have less electrons than protons, you'll have a positive charge. Next, I would like to go over is an example of how they will repel and attract. As you can see in this picture, this young child has taken their balloon and rubbed it on their head. And when they have done that, all the electrons that were in this person's hair were transferred to this balloon and gave this balloon a negative charge. As you can see, their hair has only positive charges because it has a lack of electrons and they all repel each other. This negatively charged balloon is now able to stick to other positively charged things. All right, everyone. Now that we've gone over the difference between charges, I'd like to now go over the difference between a conductor and a insulator and what allows them to function as such. So first of all, the definition I would say, the difference between these two is its ability to allow electrons to flow through that material. If we look at a conductor here, we can see that this electron can for, the, can for the most part flow through this material and get to the other side and allow the flow of a charge. Versus an insulator, this electron really has a hard time getting to the other side. And this is because of the elements that are used to make a conductor versus an insulator. The elements used to make most conductors tend to be metals, such as copper, silver, and gold. These elements have the ability to let go of their electrons very easily. Another example of a conductor is actually salt water. This is because it has negatively charged ions, such as chlorine, which can flow through water very easily. An insulator, these tend to be materials such as rubber, wood, and glass. These types of materials hold on to their electrons very tightly, and they have a hard time receiving electrons and letting go of their electrons. There, you have seen a few cases where you've seen this in, in your daily lives. For example, a cord, for example, is covered with rubber, but in the middle of it has some sort of metal, such as copper, to allow the flow, flow of electrons. This is actually for a safety reason, so that you don't get yourself electrocuted, and it keeps the electrons flowing in an orderly fashion. All right, now that we've gone over the difference between insulators and conductors and the abilities that they have to allow electricity to flow through them, I'd like to go over how we, the difference between putting charges on insulators versus conductors. To start off with, to put a charge on an insulator, it takes work and energy. Because as you remember, electrons have a hard time flowing through these types of materials. So an example of you putting work would be going back to the balloon example. This little child has to put energy by rubbing the balloon on their head. And once they have done this, we can tell that the electrons got transferred to the balloon because their hair is sticking straight up and it's repelling each other. So the main thing I'd like you to focus on on this is that it takes energy and work to charge insulators.
because they don't allow the flow of electrons. Conductors, on the other hand, to be able to put a charge on a conductor, all you need to do is bring a charged object and touch, and touch the conductor, and as you can see, it allows that negative charge to be put on this conductor. And this is because electrons flow easily through conductors. So they're able to accept charges very, very easily. Um, the next type of way to put charges is something called induction. This is an example of induction. We will bring two conductors together, and then we will bring a charged object close by. We, never, we don't touch it, but we just bring it close by. And as you can see, it pulls these negative charges over and because of this positive charge, it attracts them. And then once these negative charges are over, we can separate the two, and now this object has a negative charge and a positive charge. An example of real life for induction is actually wireless cell phone chargers. Your wireless cell phone charger never actually touches the battery or the phone itself, but it's done through this same example. It brings a charge nearby and inside your phone, Science beyond me, you, you get your charge, you get your phone charged. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned the difference between insulators and conductors and how to charge them. And hopefully this will help you in your class. Have a great day.